don't know if you can see the coolant coming in here as I turned off. Got coolant coming out of everywhere. <coughs> it's not good. I've just topped it up, but it's it's the bottom hose. It's not tightened up properly, I think. And I've got the MOT in half an hour. Uh, I don't think it's just I tip it in here and it runs out the bottom. That is dead empty. All right, so I've just cancelled the MOT. It's literally in 25 minutes. I've been doing my warm-up run to get there and uh, get up to temperature nice and hot and obviously that heat is <laughs> caused a problem but I can't really see it at the moment because I need to get on my back and I don't want to lie in muddy coolant so there's water all around here it's splattering around but it's the bottom hose that's it's going down in the middle there right now right in the middle been leaking out of that. As it stands, I cannot move the vehicle. So I'm probably gonna have to bring my other defender, bring some stuff to get on the floor, see what the problem is, bring a whole load more coolant. Well, glad I had this. I've had it in the back for so many years and never used it. But it turns out that the leak was so big that I've, even if I did fix the leak, I've got screwdriver, I've got screwdrivers in there, even if I did fix the leak. Got no coolant to put back in any water, so I mean, I think the whole lot's come out because it's there's trails all up the road. But this thing saved me, it saved me, it's paid off after all these years. Luckily, though, I've got the day of work, I've been working on the vehicle all this week, ending on a Friday with the MOT, and this is what we end up to end up with. So, I had so many other plans, things planned for today. Oh my god, question is, do I phone the missus? who's working and try and get her to come and pick me up. I'm probably three miles from home, somewhere like that. Do I ring her and get her to come and pick me up or do I run home, get the other defender? Hmm. Right, I'm back. I'm just putting together an emergency box of stuff, everything I need, hose clips and, and funnel. And then I've got deionized water uh this is new stuff i don't really want to use this or any put any coolant in i'll do some mixed coolant as well i don't really want to use this stuff um unless i have to i might yeah i just need to get it home i might i might get use some rainwater actually save me using all the deionized water i've got all right well i'm back it's funny the last time i was in this situation was about 12 years ago Although the circumstances were quite a bit different. <laughs> There's uh, quite a lot of deja vu. But you know, 12 years between losing coolant and being stranded is not that bad, perhaps. All right, I've got a little plastic down, so <laughs> cardboard doesn't soak it up straight away. Let's go, let's go and see what the damage is. So, I think we've found the problem. That hose clamp has completely snapped. This is the one that I replaced, as you can see. I think we can replace that and we'll be good to go. That is incredible. And there is the problem. Completely split under pressure. Uh, I'm going to fit on one of these constant tension clamps, which is why I've fit along the top here. Because uh, supposedly this is what you should use with the plastic hoses, spigots. I've got the plastic uh, radio in here. I've already cracked. The bloody f uh, the the plug on the top, so I've had to replace that with a brass one. Um, so that's why I chose to use these, just in case. That one's a fifty mil. That one's a fifty three mil. Um, yeah, so I'll I'll fit one of these. And um, but it really is just to get me a hose fix instead of buggering about with these. Right, the hose is back on, thankfully. Because the hoses are quite warm, they're quite supple, so it will go on. Now I just need to lower the clamp into position and release it. Okay, it's on. I'll give it a tug test from the top. Let me give you the full story on this. So this is kind of the latest 300 TDI pipe. It comes in different sections, and it's what rest of the wild spec defenders had, as opposed to the single moulded pipe that goes right down here, right down to the bottom, and up into the bottom of the, the, the coolant tank. I fitted one of these because I was like, oh, it's probably going to be better because it's modular, you can fix and replace individual hoses. Turns out the weak link here has been, there's so many bloody hose clips. You've got one, two, three there, 
four, five, six down the bottom there. So you've got six extra hose clips and that is what has failed is these have rusted through completely in four or five years. So I did a video about that, which you can go and watch on the screen. And then this is my comeuppance. I think, yeah, I think well, I'm going to have to see, I might buy another one of these pipes, but at least I'm going to have to replace all the hose clips because they are an absolute liability. What I was trying to feel on that pipe, uh, on the pipe down there, is for a barb and they don't tend to have barbs like you would think along the edge here i think they have sort of raised ridges that this is supposed to clamp onto like gripping as opposed to having a barb yeah i can't feel a barb at all this side of the hose clamp so it's an interesting concept there what i might do is buy a genuine one and see what the genuine one's like because i think i did originally think well this was sold as genuine and i bought it on ebay in hindsight i think it's not genuine I think the hose clamps give it away, but I might buy a genuine one just to compare. Although maybe very luckily, I do have my other Defender here, which is a rest of the world spec 300 TDI, or was before they put the 2.8 in it. Um, this is 2003. I think it's got a genuine hose here, so I think that's original. This is the original hose here. It has better hose screw clips. Um, that doesn't have barbs on there either. That's just sort of flat down. That's interesting. This one's had an extender piece put in for some reason. I don't really know why. But these clips are in very good condition comparatively. See that? They're probably just generally better quality. These, the other ones that came with the other hose have just completely rotted out. They're probably the cheapest of the cheap, whereas these ones are a lot, uh, a lot better. Okay, that's taken about seven litres. One of these plus a bit more there. It's about seven litres. Can't hear any water gushing out. So it lost seven of 11. And that's within the space of the low coolant alarm. The low coolant warning came on. I probably pulled over at this turn off 20 seconds after it came on. Okay. See if there's any leaks. Okay, there's no obvious leaks, which is good, which means I can at least drive three miles. Hopefully it's cooled down quite a bit now that the thermostat would closed a bit and it's not going to push so much or pressurise as much in that three miles. So I'll, I'll take it slow. First though, I've got to drive home, come back with the missus who kindly pick me, did pick me up in the end. It's not dried up, this tends to be what coolant doesn't do. So I think what I'm going to do is follow the trail and see how far back it actually started pumping out and then I can tell you how basically how far it took to lose seven litres. So when I did go back home with the other Defender I measured, I retraced my steps and following the coolant trail, it was very obvious where it started, 0.4 miles from where the coolant trail started to where I'm parked right now. And I lost more than half the coolant on this Defender we are off. I've got the heaters on full. Try and dissipate as much heat and I'm going to take it very slowly. Right, well, I'm going to have to drain the coolant. If this hose clip's gone, then all the others, I'm going to have to replace all those and take the bottom hose off anyway. Second time in a week. The coolant was due a change. I had to do the time belt. You've just got to take the radio around if it for anyway. And the radio, the radio is doing this. So I replaced it, you know, while I was in there. Replaced the radiator. And you can only get plastic ones these days. Plastic tanks. This one's metal, like the original, the OEM, but they're only plastic these days. So you end up with these hose, these spigots, plain plastic. Now, from the factory, you know, you have a hose clip, a worm drive hose clip, Jubilee clip, but this is metal. Modern vehicles have got constant tension clamps which are designed to be used with plastic. Supposedly, I don't know if this is a myth or you know an internet myth or real world, but the, the the internet says that the plastic expands with temperature and then you know this adjusts. Um, it also means that you're not going to wrench down with the screw and then crack this because it just pr provides an even bit of pressure all the way around, which I kind of like. So I've replaced the ones on the top and I. I was a bit umming and ahhing about the bottom one, about trying to f get the sizing. Anyway, when I'd taken off the bottom hose clip, this happened. It completely disintegrated. This came out of here, and then I just had to separate it to get it off the hose. 
so I replaced this one and didn't really you know if it ain't broke don't fix it I didn't change any of the others so that's where we've ended up right now so this has kind of kicked off this whole chain of problems that I've now found myself in I've missed the MOT um, I'm keeping this one though just if I can get it recorded again in the future which is why it's in this box just this is what happens when you start disturbing stuff on old vehicles you end up with a mess so if we're going to do some analysis on this 0.4 miles at 55 60 miles an hour as I remember it it's basically about 650 meters at 24 and a half meters a second at 55 miles an hour which basically puts it at about 26 seconds for all the coolant to drain to where it is, or for me to uh, pull over. Um, if I was going at 60 miles an hour, it would be about 24 seconds. So around about the same, I remembered it being 20 seconds. But it, the, had, <laughs> the coolant alarm had gone on briefly this morning. It does go on, the coolant drops over you know a few thousand miles, and it flickers on and off. Um, the light flickers on and off as it gets sloshed at heavy braking, and the level's a bit lower. So it had been on that this morning, and I thought it was just sort of like an airlock working its way through. I didn't really think about it, but this was on and it stayed on and I, and I had to double take for a second. And I was like, huh, that's staying on. But then I just had to trust my instincts and say, no, it's on. I need to check it for a reason. So that's why it took about 20 seconds for me to stop. Well, in this case, probably 25 seconds. So basically the seven liters, I was losing about 300 mil per second. That's probably the highest rate you could imagine. I think because it's the whole hose was open and with just coolant flooding out of it, actually from two ends, even one the hose at the top and the hose at the bottom stub of the radiator. Um, so yeah, 300 mil second. What that means is five litres of antifreeze cost £27 at 50% mix. I was losing one pound a second in that incident. But in reality, it could have been a whole lot worse. All thanks to the uh, the low coolant uh, alarm i've got set up if you want to know a bit more about how i've set that up there's a video linked uh, in the description and on screen and there's also an article on my website where i describe how i put it together there's lots of different ways of doing the coolant alarms out there um, but the one i've chosen the one that, that's fault tolerant and a failure in the wiring or a low coolant will trigger the the, the warning light so basically what that means is uh, the correct level will hold the warning light off as opposed to a low level triggering the light on, which is not fault tolerant. I've got to drain the block as well. I always find this one a pain. I've got to take this out because actually there was a bit of coolant left in, but it's very diluted and it's actually going to be freezing tonight. It's going to be the first time, first night in freezing temperatures. Move it out of the way. These are the offending hoses. You'll see down the bottom of the silvery one, that's the one that actually busted when I removed it. Got the bottom hose off, it's all been drained. These are some of the crusty ones that I'm going to need to replace. Anyway, I've ordered a genuine hose. I'm going to do another video follow-up of this and we'll see where we go. A bit of a comparison between this cheapy one, different types of hose clamps we can use and uh, we'll go from there. See how we can improve on this design so that we don't end up with this happening again. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.